Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining. I'm Dr. Doroma, and I'm a practitioner at the Stram Center for Integrative Medicine. Tonight, I'll be doing a brief discussion on Lyme disease, which will be followed by a live Q&A with myself and Dr. Stram. Please leave your questions in the comment section below during the presentation. Now, we'll be discussing uh, prevention, testing, and an integrative approach to treatment. First, I would like to say that Lyme disease is the fastest growing vector borne infectious disease in the United States. Uh, the CDC reports that it uh, infects about 420,000 people each year, and that likely is underreported, uh, but it's also 10 times uh, more Americans than uh, what was previously reported. For tick bite prevention, uh, it is important to wear adequate clothing, light colored long sleeves and light pants, closed toed shoes, pants tucked into socks if going into high tick exposed areas. You can treat clothes and gear with 0.5% permethrin. Uh, permethrin should not be applied directly to the skin, but permethrin can uh, last on clothes for uh, up to six weeks. You can spray clothes, boots, and camping gear such as uh, backpacks and uh, tents. You can also spray natural insect repellent directly on the skin. These contain essential oils such as lemon, eucalyptus, and neem oil. Chemical sprays include DEET and picaridin. And after being outdoors uh, and before uh, going inside, you want to check uh, your clothes and body. And of course, you want to shower after being outdoors. If you do have a tick bite, so what do you do? Uh, you want to carefully remove the attached tick. Uh, if the tick is intact, uh, even if the head is removed, you can uh, have the option of sending the tick in for testing to tickreport.com. The standard panel for tick testing includes Borrelia burgdorferi, Borrelia miyamotoi, Borrelia maoni, Babesia, Ehrlichia, and Anaplasma. And it is recommended that if the tick is attached for more than three hours uh, to start antibiotic treatment for 20 days. And this is a recommendation uh, by ILADS. Symptoms of Lyme disease, tier one symptoms may include flu-like symptoms, migratory joint pain and headache. Tier 2 symptoms, fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, and memory loss, and Tier 3 symptoms, uh, neurologic symptoms, and POTS. Testing oftentimes is inadequate. The standard screening test is only about 35% uh, sensitive. Western blot test is more sensitive. This is a confirmatory test that reveals the actual antibodies that are formed against the Borrelia bacteria. C6 peptide test was developed around uh, the year 2000. This is an IgG antibody test specific to the sixth invariant region, VLSE1 lipoprotein of Borrelia. PCR testing is a direct DNA test. If positive, then it confirms an active infection However, this test has a high false negative, especially for blood tests. So at the STRAM Center, we take a whole person approach to treatment. This includes uh, supportive care, supplementation and nutrition, protocols for the GI tract, and also prescription medication. Nutrition recommendations include an anti-inflammatory diet, uh, paleo diet, or a ketogenic diet. Diets are recommended by our nutritionist, and they are done on an individual basis. We often recommend the anti-inflammatory diet for many of our patients. The anti-inflammatory diet is high in omega-3s. Fatty acids, this includes fatty fish, walnuts, and flax. We also try to limit omega-6 fatty acids, which include wheat, corn, and soy. 
You also want to try to limit animal saturated fats, red meat and pork predominantly. And also we want to limit inflammatory food proteins such as gluten that's in wheat and also casein and whey proteins that are in dairy products. Gut protocol uh, is very important as uh, some treatment therapies like antibiotic therapies can uh, potentially affect the gut microbiome. So taking probiotics is an essential part of the treatment protocol. Uh, probiotics can also stimulate GST production and intestinal cell wall, which helps with detoxification. Herbal therapies can include Japanese knotweed, cat's claw, oregano, and grapefruit seed extract. And these herbal therapies have been shown to be directly antibacterial against the Borrelia bacteria. Japanese knotweed, also known as Polygonum cupsatum, uh, contains a large amount of resveratrol. Resveratrol is a very strong antioxidant, good for vascular health. You know, resveratrol uh, from red wine because it's a high amount uh, found in the skins of red grapes. It also has strong anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial activities, and it also crosses the blood-brain barrier as well. Cat's claw is an uh, herb that we use that has very strong anti-inflammatory properties, also has antioxidant effects as well. It does help support DNA repair, joint health, immune function, and normal cell division. It's very good for joint pain and inflammation as well. We also utilize oregano. Uh, in vitro studies have found that it has strong activity against all forms of Lyme bacteria and biofilm. So over the past couple of years, we have been utilizing hyperbaric oxygen therapy in the treatment of tick-borne illness. Hyperbaric oxygen helps to uh, mobilize blood flow to infected tissue and bone, uh, helps to augment antimicrobial interventions by driving uh, medications further into tissue, also enhances white blood cell and immune system activity, and also uh, increases oxygen free radicals which kill organisms. We can also combine hyperbaric oxygen therapy with other therapies that include intravenous antibiotic therapy, IV vitamin C therapy, and other IV nutritional therapies. We have been utilizing IV vitamin C at the Stram Center for many years now. Vitamin C has a lot of beneficial properties. Uh, for the immune system, it helps to enhance uh, immune antibodies, including lymphocytes and natural killer cells. It also enhances microbial killing. It reduces the cytokine or inflammatory response. Can also help decrease histamine levels as well. Vitamin C also has antioxidant properties as it acts as an electron donor and therefore protects against oxidative damage. It has been shown that vitamin C levels in diabetics and smokers are reduced and so therefore they typically benefit an intake of higher amounts of vitamin C. The issue with vitamin C sometimes is its absorption. With oral absorption you can only get so much vitamin C in the plasma levels. With IV vitamin C, we can oftentimes increase vitamin C plasma levels by uh, more than 70 times. The reason is that vitamin C is actively transported by intestinal cells and it is a tightly regulated and controlled. Uh, dietary consumption of vitamin C can achieve plasma levels of about 4.4 milligrams per deciliter. With vitamin C supplementation, it's been found that uh, oral supplementation up to 18 grams per day can achieve uh, levels of only about 12.2 milligrams per deciliter, which is only about three times more than what you can achieve uh, through uh, dietary consumption of vitamin C. And at high oral consumption of vitamin C this can actually lead to osmotic diarrhea. 
because intravenous absorption, IV vitamin C bypasses the controls of GI absorption so we can actually obtain much higher plasma levels even at low doses. As little as three grams of IVC can increase plasma levels up to 97.7 milligrams per deciliter, uh, which is more than 20 times what you can get from dietary intake of vitamin C. At 50 grams of vitamin C levels increase to 741 milligrams per deciliter, which is uh, more than uh, seven times that. IV vitamin C has been found to have many medicinal uses as it has antiviral activity and antibacterial activity. Currently, vitamin C has, uh, is being used uh, for uh, the treatment of viral infections like COVID-19. It is being used in emergency departments and hospitals uh, around the world as an adjunct treatment. As an antibacterial, it has been found to uh, have antibacterial activity against uh, species such as mycobacteria, Staph aureus, and H. pylori. With Lyme disease, typically what we can see is that Lyme can damage collagen and elastic fibers of the skin, tendons, and ligaments. Since vitamin C is very beneficial for uh, collagen production, vitamin C is a nice adjunctive uh, treatment for uh, Lyme disease infection. Lyme bacteria can also increase cellular oxidative stress and vitamin C also can help combat that oxidative stress being an antioxidant. And vitamin C has also been shown in vitro to have direct antiborrelia activity. Therefore what we have found is that vitamin C therapy is actually a great adjunct in the treatment of Lyme disease. Thank you for your attention. Please click the link in comments to access the live Q&A, which will begin now.